Welcome everyone. We're going to get started here on our Getting More Out of Shobi Pro webinar. My name is Erin and I'm going to be facilitating this for you today. So this is me here. My name is Erin Orris and I'm the School and District Support Lead here for Shobi. So my role is to ensure that users are getting the most out of our platform. So this might come in the form of answering questions or queries, providing any support that's needed, as well as creating uh, resources such as this webinar to educate people on all of the features that are included in our platform. So we conducted an international survey of teachers who use our classroom management platform because we wanted to determine if it was making an impact in their classrooms. So we wanted to know about teachers' experiences, specifically in things like implementing Shobi and if the platform created noticeable differences in student engagement, feedback quality on assignments, as well as classroom organization and other areas related to classroom efficiency. So we surveyed approximately 4,800 teachers worldwide who had been actively using Shobi for at least three months and, who, and had used Shobi to grade at least 600 student assignments. So we were looking for a population of teachers who had really had a chance to dive into Shobi. And of the responses we received, the results showed that teachers who used Shobi had seen noticeable benefits as a result of using the platform. As you can see here, our numbers indicate that as well. Now, this webinar focuses on our pro features and specifically how to use them within Shobi. But I do want to provide a little context for this presentation. So I'd like to start off by prefacing it with a question. What's the difference in Shobi Basic versus Shobi Pro? Now the obvious answer to this question is the extra features that are included in the pro licensing. But probably the biggest and most notable difference people see in Shobi Basic is the assignment limit. Shobi Basic caps its active assignments at 10, meaning that you can have no more than 10 active assignments at any one time. So as a teacher who uses Shobi on the daily or more comprehensively, you can probably see some limitations with this. Of course, with that being said, Basic users can always archive assignments to free up room for new ones, but a little more thought needs to go into which assignments they want to juggle. Now, as I mentioned, the Shobi Pro features that are included with our Pro licensing include things like unlimited active assignments, as well as no expiry on those assignments, um, student portfolio, collaboration features such as groups and class discussions, as well as our gradebook. And today, I'm gonna focus on those features. Primarily, I'll talk about parent access, portfolio, all of our collaboration features, and I'll touch on our gradebook at the end as well. So diving right in, what is parent access? Parent access is essentially um, the ability for parents to create their own Shobi parent account. And what this does is it allows for them to keep up to date on their student or their children's work in school. They have access to what they're working on, um, their students or their children's portfolio in Shobi, as well as some of the classes and assignments that they are working on. And just like for teachers and for students, it's easy to set up and use, and it works on any connected device. And most importantly, it allows parents the opportunity to extend their children's learning beyond the classroom. Because parents who are able to remain informed of student progress can offer greater assistance or support at home. Now, when we're looking at who can sign up, we initially created this feature with parents in mind. Parents who had children who were students in classes who were using Shobi. But what we've noticed over time is that this visibility on a student's work also extends to tutors or educational support assistants who are providing support outside of the classroom, but really benefit from knowing what's going on during the school day. Now looking at what exactly parents can see, the visibility within Shobi for parents is somewhat similar to what students see. So by default, parents are always going to be able to see the student's portfolio, as well as any groups that they might be involved in as a parent, and if enabled, any assignments within a specific class. So for example, in this Geography 15 class, it states parent access not enabled. This is because the teacher of this Geography 15 class did not turn on or enable parent access. And the reason for this might be because 
teacher does not feel it's necessary for the parent to see every assignment that might be going on, or maybe they just didn't want to turn it on at this point in time. On the flip side, if a parent does have access to a class, this is what they're going to see. They're going to have access to the student's folder. So this means that they will be able to see any comments or documents or resources that were added to the shared folder by the teacher that was then subsequently distributed to each individual folder, as well as any comments, communication, or items that were added directly into that student folder. Additionally, parents can be um, linked to more than just one student. So if a parent has multiple students who are using Shobi, they can actually see both of them right within the same account, which makes it a little bit easier to keep track of both children and their education. Now looking at the portfolio, the parent automatically by default is going to be able to see the portfolio and they're going to be able to see everything in it. So they'll be able to see um, when an item was added, by who that item was added, as well as the class and the assignment that that item is coming from. Now, in order for a parent to gain access to a particular student's information or um, work, they need to be provided with an individualized, unique student code. So similar to our class codes, which are unique to each class, every student that signs up with a student account in Shobi has a student code that's generated. And this can be found under the students tab in the student information. So as a teacher, you can provide the parents with that student code so that they can link up and then have access to their children's education. Additionally, we recognize that although Shobi is a paperless classroom app, sometimes there is a need to actually print out documents. So what we've done is we've generated a handy little handout to invite parents to show me. So we, you go into your students tab, click on the student, and then you can print or email or save this handout, which provides their name, the class, the teacher's name, as well as the individual code that needs to be provided to the parent for them to link up with the student. And then we also add a little how to join your student on show me blurb so that we can make it really easy and accessible for new parents to show me. The student portfolio is basically a space in Shobi in which students' work can be curated and accessible to them for review and reflection. So even following the completion of the class or assignment, students can add exemplary work or works in progress to help capture their educational journey throughout Shobi. And the portfolio is not limited to student works alone. Comments, grades, and feedback can also be added to the portfolio. Now, by default, teachers are able to add any student item into their portfolio. They will, however, only be able to view items in the portfolio that were added from a class that they, as the teacher, were involved in. Students, in all cases, will be able to access their portfolio in its entirety. However, they will only be able to add items if the teacher has enabled it in class settings. And I, like I said before, parents are going to have access to that portfolio as well. Now, when you're looking to add an item to a student's portfolio, you just need to keep a lookout for the star icon. So in this example, we're in a document, and that star icon is just at the top right. So clicking on that will automatically push that into the student's portfolio. Additionally, you can find the star icon within the student folder. So with the iOS app, you can swipe right to left and it'll present itself, or in the drop-down menu for the web app as well. And it's easy to add the item and it's also easy to remove it. Just clicking on the uh, filled in star will remove it from the portfolio as well. Now, if you want to view a particular student's portfolio, this is done under the students tab. You're gonna search for your student either by typing in their name or scrolling through, and you're just gonna click on their portfolio button and that'll present to you there. And now it is important to remember as the teacher, you're only going to be able to see the items that you were involved in. So whether you added that item or that item came from a class of yours. And again, everyone has access to this. So student, teacher, and parent, if the parent is linked up to the student, but the teacher's visibility is a little bit different. Next, I'm gonna chat with you about our collaboration features, starting with co-teaching. So co-teaching really helps to extend Shobi beyond an individual classroom. And it really helps to create a community within a school. 
So just like teachers do um, on a day-to-day -day basis, oftentimes we find them co-teaching a class. So we wanted to enable that in Shobi as well. So what happens here is that a teacher can join another teacher's class to be a co-teacher. And once they're joined up, they have the exact same access and abilities within that class as the teacher who owns it. So as a co-teacher joining a class, it's the exact same to join the class as it is for a student. They require the class code that they input and then they click join. However, the big difference is that instead of automatically being joined to the class like a student, the teacher has to wait to be approved by their co-teacher who is the owner of the class. And the reason we do this is just to ensure security and privacy of the classes in case the code for whatever reason or somehow manages to get into the wrong hands. Now, as the owner of the class, you do need to approve your co-teacher or else they won't have access. This is done in the class members section and you can simply click on it and hit approve teacher and then that teacher will now have access to the class. It's a really great way to collaborate with your colleagues and provide um, personalized feedback to your students. Next, we have Shobi Groups. Now, Shobi Groups is an incredibly versatile and flexible feature included in our pro licensing. It enables teachers, students, or parents, and almost any combination of those three users to communicate and collaborate with each other. So groups can be used as a resource sharing platform among teachers. It can be used as an announcements page for students and parents and teachers to be aware of upcoming events happening at the school, or you might use it for um, extracurriculars such as the soccer team and their upcoming practices. It's up to you how you want to use Shobi groups but the opportunity to use them is really exciting and uh, it's a really great way to take advantage of expanding the learning environment beyond the classroom. Next, we have class discussions. So class discussions exist within a class and any member of that particular class will have access to this feature. And it acts as um, a sort of a rolling forum for people to comment or add resources to. Now, it's really great because it allows for active communication and conversation to happen as well. Teachers do have the ability to pause or restart a discussion if maybe it gets a little too chatty. Now, what's important to note about class discussion specifically is the difference between it and the shared folder. The shared folder, which is also found underneath of a class and within the assignment, is used by teachers to relay comments, documents, or resources to every member of the class. However, these comments and resources get copied to each member so that they get their own copy to work on and annotate and edit. So when they are viewing their document, they're only going to see their own annotations as well as the teacher's feedback. The opposite is true of class discussions. So anything that's added to class discussions is basically accessible to any member of the class. So if someone was to add a certain worksheet or document that could be opened up by the members of the class, any member can annotate on it and every member is going to be able to see it. So just an important distinction to keep in mind when you are using these two platforms. Finally, the gradebook feature is an additional feature of our pro version. So Shobi is really great for providing formative and personalized feedback, even at its basic level. Gradebook just extends that beyond the annotation features, which are available or basic. With the gradebook, you can actually assign a grade, whether that be a letter grade, a number grade, an emoji, however you want to set up your grading format can be done in Shobi, and it also allows for feedback. Additionally, with the gradebook, you can then export those grades out in any format that you need, so as a CSV, an HTML, or as an email, if you need to be presenting your grades um, to an administrator or you store your grades in a greater gradebook outside of the um, platform itself. So that is a really quick overview of our Shobi Pro features. There's a lot to, uh, to explore within them as well. Um, I always encourage people to dive in and play around themselves. It's the best way to learn about the features. I talked a little bit about our unlimited active assignments as well as our expiry dates. We chatted about parent access, student portfolios, our collaboration features, including groups, class discussion, and co-teaching, and I chatted about our gradebook.
Those are the primary features, but again, take a look at them, play around, see what you can do with them and make them your own. Shobi is incredibly versatile that way. And finally, if you have questions about anything that I mentioned in this webinar, you need a little bit more information about something, you're looking for a few extra resources, please feel free to reach out to us. You can email us at success at I can be happy to chat with you about those features. You can reach out to me directly on Twitter. My handle is at Erin Shobi, or you can visit us at www.shobi.com. We have some really amazing resources and some support materials as well for you to take a look at. That concludes our webinar for today. I hope you found it helpful. Again, feel free to reach out if you have any questions, and happy show being. <laughs>